This is the second in my series of videos about the Noob Sound 6P1 amplifier, a little amplifier that I've really enjoyed and been playing around a lot internally trying to improve the sound and the reliability. As I said in my earlier video, one of the problems this amplifier has is with the power filtration circuit and an oversized filter capacitor. From the factory, when you first open it up, there are two of these big blue capacitors. You'll see one here, and there would there originally was another one right next to it right here. Well, the one on this side is the first filter capacitor after the rectifier tube, which is right here. And it's about five times larger than it should be. Originally, it's a 150 UF. And after some experimenting, I found a 22 UF is a great balance between not having any hum in the system and being too large that will stress out the rectifier tube. The reason that the big capacitor stresses out the rectifier tube is when you first turn on the amp, there's an inrush of current trying to charge these capacitors. And this first one, there's no resistance between it and the rectifier tube. And that's what, one of the reasons that that large capacitor will make the tube arc. Also, if this filter slash storage capacitor is too large, when you look at the rectification wave and the way that the rectifier tube pulls current through it, if the capacitor is too large, it shortens the window that the rectifier tube is allowed for current to flow through it, and it spikes the current on each cycle of the AC. What we want to do is replace that big capacitor with a 22 UF 450 volt capacitor. Now I'm going to point out a few electrical points inside the amplifier. This is where the B plus comes in. This is the star ground point. The screw right here grounds to the center tap of the transformer at the bottom of the spacer that spaces this point to point attachment board from the chassis. So this is where everything in the amplifier grounds. This is a little ground bus between these capacitors. There's a wire that jumps over that makes um, let me get my bearings here. This is a ground lug, and this is a ground lug. So you've got this ground, this is a ground, and this is a ground. And then going across on the other side, this is a ground, and this is a ground. So before you do anything inside one of these amplifiers, you need to ensure that there's no voltage on any of these capacitors. This isn't intended as a safety lesson on how to work inside an amplifier, but just some very basic guidelines. For one thing, put one hand behind your back and only work inside the amplifier one hand at a time. That keeps the voltage from, if you do get shocked, it keeps the voltage from going across your chest. Obviously, you want to make sure it's unplugged. And I always use one lead with a clip on it. So I clip to the ground, have my voltmeter set on DC, and then I check the B+. Plus. And as you can see, there's no voltage. And I check across the positive of all these filter capacitors and make sure that none of them have any voltage on them. So you just kind of go down the amplifier and make sure that 
Nothing is hot that you're going to be messing with. So this amplifier has been off for a while and there's no voltage inside it. So we know it's safe. The other thing you can do if you're not real comfortable with using a lead like this, you can put a clamp on the end of it instead. And I recommend using like these little covers that expose only the very tip of it to make sure that you don't accidentally short some stuff out. But these leads also have where you can screw a little tip on like this to it and you could clip onto both wires and that way you're not probing around inside, especially if you're going to be checking voltages with the amp plugged in and hot. If you're skittish at all, you can clamp onto the place that you're going to check the voltage in the ground and then power up the amp and then you don't have your hands anywhere near the circuit while it's powered up. So now that we know it's safe inside, I can point to some other things that I've done to this amplifier that really have helped the performance of it. While you're doing this mod here with the filter capacitor reduction, you should wire in what's called a bleeder resistor right here. And what this resistor does, and I'll put the value in the comment section, it goes between the ground of the capacitor to the hot side and do it on like this big capacitor. What this bleeder resistor does is when you turn off the amplifier, it drains the voltage out of these capacitors so that there, after about five minutes, there's no dangerous voltages inside it. While not 100% necessary because it is covered on the bottom, it does just make the amplifier safer and less likely to get shocked if you're changing tubes or messing around with tube sockets or anything like that with the amplifier unplugged. The other thing to note was without this bleeder resistor, if there are no tubes in the sockets other than the rectifier and you turn it on and it charges up all these capacitors, they can stay charged up for several days. And so this bleeder capacitor keeps that issue from being a problem. As you can see right here on the transformer, it says 110 volts. So it's very clear this is a 110 volt wired tube amplifier which is why you have the problem in North America with it plugged into our 120 to 125 volt outlets. So on to other modifications that I've done. The cathode bypass capacitors that are installed in this amplifier are probably not the greatest. And these are some components that are very reasonably priced and they are in the signal path. So while you're inside this amplifier, go ahead and get some Nikicon, you know, uh, capacitors that are rated for the voltage that'll be on them. And I'll, again, I'll put these in the listing below or in the text below, um, the, the values of the components that I installed in here. And while it was... A subtle change it was audible and so while you're in here soldering and desoldering stuff those are one of the next things that probably should be replaced and lastly while you're in here to replace these film capacitors these are this pair here and here these two these are the coupling capacitors that go between the plate of the driver tube and the grid of the output tubes. The signal is going through these capacitors. And so having a high quality capacitor in this location is very important. Over here, these two 
These are the grid leak bypass capacitors. And the way the original wiring is done with the driver tube being a dual triode that's set up as a cascode with a grid leak bias, these also are responding to the audio signal and how the driver tubes are being, the upper section of the driver tubes being biased. And I discovered after some research that that's not an ideal way for a hi-fi amplifier to be wired. And it's usually something they do with guitar amplifiers where they're looking for distortion. And I'll get into that in just a moment. But while you're buying this, these are the same value. So pick up a couple of these Solene capacitors to use in this location too. These little Solene film caps are a lot faster at responding than what, the, than what comes in the amplifier. And they're higher quality and they're only a couple of dollars a piece. I wouldn't get too crazy about the getting into like the boutique caps in this amplifier. Um, I mean, you could spend $500 on coupling capacitors, which would be ridiculous to do on a $300 amp. So, you know, there are some Mundorf and some other folks that make some, you know, five to $10 capacitors that you might consider, especially for this location here that is, um, in the signal path, but I wouldn't go crazy with coupling caps in this this level of an amplifier. So back to the issue with the driver tube. When I put this amplifier on the oscilloscope and was driving it with a signal generator, I noticed once you got over 5 eighths volume, there was a very asymmetrical clipping on the output of the amplifier. And when I went inside and started tracing the signal, it was clipping coming out of the driver tube, not at the output. So it got me to question this kind of oddball grid leak bias design that it was using to set the bias voltage on the grid of the upper section of this cascoded pair of triodes. And what I mean by that is this tube has two triodes inside it and they're basically kind of series together to increase the amplification factor between the input and the driver tube. Anyway, the more research I did about this, that there's two different ways of setting the negative voltage needed on the grid of the upper section of this two pair of tube segments and one of them is this grid leak bias and the other one is to set it with a fixed bias and I did that your amplifier won't have this little resistor pair and will look a little different in this area my next video goes into detail about how I wired this up when I did this and set a fixed bias for the upper section of the this pair of triodes, it totally fixed the asymmetrical clipping at 5 eighths and up volume that this amplifier had. And it makes from 5 eighths to full volume actually usable. So it increases the usable wattage of the amplifier by at least two, if not three watts. And it legit then becomes a six watt amplifier. So this is probably the most complicated thing I did in here. That's not just a direct replacement of parts. Was setting a fixed bias on this driver tube. But I don't think it's real complicated. And I will share the before and after schematics so that you can see exactly how it's wired. From this point, it's fairly simple to then just Try rolling in some different driver tubes to see which ones you like. I've tried quite a few in these. These are Philco branded, but they're, I think most people refer to these as like the chrome dome tubes that are 
um, were made by Sylvania, and they sound really good in this amplifier. Again, the factory tubes actually sound pretty good, and I don't think that the difference that you're going to hear is going to be night and day. There definitely are some 6SN7 tubes that sound worse than the ones that it came with. At one point, I was considering replacing the output transformers with something that was a little higher quality and possibly wiring the output tubes from their present triode strapped configuration to being ultra linear wired, which would increase their, the power output of the amplifier and in my experience makes them sound better. But then you start talking about spending several hundred dollars on an amp that costs three hundred dollars. And in addition to that, to really push this amp where it could go would require changing the way the cathode bias is shared between the two output tubes and individually ground them through their own resistor capacitor pair. Then I discovered that doing that would increase the milliamp draw on the power transformer, which already runs fairly warm and would likely cause it to burn up. So then you're replacing the power transformer, the output transformers, you're trying to find a trans power transformer that will bolt into this space that has the right voltages that I wasn't able to find because most of the aftermarket power transformers aren't this laydown style. So at that point, I just decided that we were at diminishing returns here and just enjoy this amp the way it sounds with these fairly simple, low-cost modifications that I did to it. I hope you enjoyed my video, and please click the like and subscribe, and fill me in in the comment section if you try any of this stuff and what you think. I've posted this info on Audio Karma. If you search 6P1, mods you will find my thread there and quite a few people have tried these modifications and their experiences mirrored mine and that it really improved the way this amp sounds and it should be a very reliable amplifier once you lower the input voltage that i discussed in the previous video and fixing this oversized capacitor on the inside of this do know that anything you do like this to this amplifier is going to void the warranty. So understand that when you go inside here. And please watch some safety videos before you open an amp up.